Hi, this lesson is about compound inequalities. Um, and just like you have probably heard of compound words, words that are made up of two parts, like sidewalk, chalkboard, or perhaps a compound in science, whereas an element is only, it's pure, it's only one thing, but a compound is made up of more than one thing. So a compound inequality means two or more inequalities that are joined together. We will only be working with ones that are two inequalities that are joined together. Um, basically, it's like two requirements that have to be filled. So they're going to be joined together with either the word or or the word and. And then we're also going to look at some that are uh, condensed together, which is a special way to write an and, the one that is an and. All right. So if it is an or in inequality, it has the tendency to graph apart or away from each other. So it goes in opposite directions. It does not overlap. And again, this says the tendency because there are some special cases. Um, but the problems we are going to do, your or answers should graph away from one another. Kind of like if you went to a buffet and they told you that children under five get a special price and senior citizens over 65 get a special price. It's or, right? You're either under five or over 65. You can't be, one person can't be both at the same time. And then if it is an and inequality, you're gonna be graphing between the endpoints. Or you might say they graph together, but they're graphing in between the two endpoints. So the example here would be, for instance, uh, like x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 3. So it's between those two numbers. So it's like one of these parts is trying to go this way, right, from 2. We're trying to go this way. We want to keep on going. But then it says, hey, 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 wait a minute. It also has to stay here or less. But this one wants to go this way. But since it's an and, the only part that actually makes it true is the part of the number line that they share. And that's why it's between them is where we actually graph when it's an and inequality. And since the and inequalities fall between two endpoints, right, it's between the two endpoints, they can also be written in a condensed form. Oh, hello. So in condensed form. Or we could say we are writing it with the variable between the two numbers. So in this case, this is showing that negative 9 is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to 9. By the way, this means the same thing as if I said A is greater than or equal to negative 9 and a is less than or equal to 9. Those, this and this mean the same thing. Notice that your symbol here is going the other direction, but the A, when compared to negative 9, is on the open side. So when you see the variable is between the two symbols, your shading is also between the two endpoints. All right, so we're first going to take a look at um, an OR problem. 
and then we'll do an and problem, and then a condensed one. All right, so this is an example of an or problem. And so we'll work this one out together, and then you have four on the next page of your packet to complete. So when there is or or and, if there is a word in the middle, you're going to solve the two parts of the compound inequality separately, and then they will just share the same number line. So these steps should look very familiar. I'm just going to rewrite the first part of the compound inequality. Negative 3v plus 2 is less than negative 4. It's like that's the first requirement. And I'm still going to put that line down. Take away 2 on both sides. So my first step, subtract 2. Again, this part should feel pretty familiar, I think. So negative 3v is less than negative 6. And then our next step, we're going to divide by negative 3. And you know it. If we multiply or divide by negative, flip the sign. Yes, we need to change our inequality symbol because we did divide by a negative, and we get positive 2. So I have v is greater than 2, and now I've done that first part of my inequality, my compound inequality. So now I'll do the second inequality that forms this compound inequality. I have 5 plus 9v less than or equal to 5. Think about how you're going to solve that. Indeed, we will subtract 5. So I'm going to do that on both sides, of course. Now, at first, that looks like, hey, wait, nothing is over there. But remember, if nothing is there, 5 minus 5, that's 0. Then we're going to divide by 9. And that gives us v is less than or equal to 0. Now what's left to do is put both parts of this compound inequality on the same number line. So the top one said v is greater than 2. So I'm going to go find 2. I'm going to put an open circle greater than 2. My shading is going to go off to the right. And then v or v is less than or equal to 0. So filled in circle at 0 and my shading is coming off and to the left. So at the bottom of this, it asks you if your graph looks right. Um, and so there's a couple things as far as does it look right. Well, when it's a compound inequality, remember on the previous page that I said if it is an or, it should graph away or apart from one another. And we do see they're going in opposite directions. So in that case, it looks right. Um, also, the zero, remember, there's a line under. It's less than or equal to. So that dot is filled in. And v is greater than 2, no equal line. So open circle. All right, so that's what you're going to utilize on the next page, very similar to that. Um, and then if you look on page, I believe it's page 13 of your packet still, or maybe it's 12 now, but the next page where it says and inequalities, I will show you one that is an and inequality. All right, I'm back, and we are ready for our second compound inequality. This compound inequality is an and compound inequality. Um, we base that on the fact that there is the word and in between the two inequalities, the two parts, right? So my first requirement to take away 6n has to be less than 50. Remember when there's a word, I just solve both sides separately. So I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. This gives me negative 6n is less than 48. 
divide both sides by negative 6. n is greater than, right, because we have to change that sign because we did divide by a negative. So we subtracted 2 divided by negative 6. Since that's a negative, I know that I had to flip my sign, reverse that direction. So the first part is n is greater than negative 8. And now in the second part, now I do the part after the word and. And for this part, we will subtract 7. Okay, subtract 7. 7n is less than or equal to 0. And then we will divide by 7. A whole lot of nothing, right? A whole lot of 0. So then n is less than or equal to 0. Now, this is an and. And and we said graphs between the endpoints. So you don't want to ever try to make your graph for each part separately. Um, you want to do your endpoints and then graph what's in between them. So greater than negative 8, so open circle at negative 8. Less than or equal to 0, filled in circle at 0. So less than 0 is going back this way, greater than negative 8 is coming this way. But they both have to stop when they get to the other endpoint. They cannot just keep going. So it is the part, the numbers between negative 8 and 0 that make this true. And again, the part about does it look correct, it's an and, so I should expect that my shading falls between my two endpoints. By the way, this solution could also be written this way. Negative 8 is less than n, which is less than or equal to 0. So if I put the n in the middle, remember that it's open to the n when compared to negative 8, so that's why that one is turning. So that can be written in that way instead of saying n is greater than negative 8 and n is less than or equal to 0, if I can just write it between like the shading looks. All right, so we have one more type of compound inequalities. And this is going to be a very common way that we will see and compound inequalities written, and that is in that condensed form, um, where whatever is in the middle is being compared to both. So you have some practice on this type, so you may want to do that, pause this, do that practice, and then come back um, to watch the last part. All right, so this one looks pretty complex, right? It's um, kind of squished together there. Um, this means, and where it says pre-step, the pre-step would be to split it into two parts. That 14 is less than 7x plus 7, which is less than 21, what that means is 14 is less than 7x plus 7, and 7x plus 7 is less than 21. The part that's in the middle is being compared to the number on the left, and it's also this entire middle is being compared also to the number on the right. We do not split the 7x plus 7 up into two different parts. Like That entire part in the middle is like used with both. So we can split it up, and I will show you splitting it up, but I will also show you, because sometimes um, the fourth one on your practice you must split up. But if there is only one x in the original problem, it's a little easier to not split it up, but I will show you what I mean. So here, um, if I were solving this, 14 is less than 7x plus 7, what would I do? I would subtract 7 and then divide by 7. Well, what am I going to do when I do this? Oh, gee, I would subtract 7 
and then divide by 7, right? I would have to do the same two steps. And because I would do the same two steps to get x alone, that's why I'm saying we could do it all at once. So if I split it into two parts and follow my steps, I get 7 is less than 7x. I divide by 7, and I get 1 is less than x. And then the other one, I subtract 7 again. 7x is less than 14. I divide by 7, and I get x is less than 2. And then I should, so this one was 1 is less than x. This one is x is less than 2. And then if I'm given the problem in compound, like in a condensed form, I should rewrite my answer, like squeeze my answer back together so that the x is in between. So this would be my final answer. On your graph, you would have an open circle at 1, an open circle at 2, and the shading would just be a tiny spot in between, not very much. So over here to the side, I'm going to show you how that would look doing it all at once. It takes a little getting used to, but for most of my students, when they can do it this way, which is anytime there's only one x, they prefer to do it this way. So you know how we've been making a line? Well, we're going to make a line both places. All right, so, so that it's separated really down through both symbols, so that it's really separated now in three parts. And then you're not trying to get rid of the 14 and the 21. You're trying to get the x by itself. So we would subtract 7. We're going to do those same two steps we just did. We're going to subtract 7, but remember, we're solving both problems at the same time when we do it this way because we didn't split it up. So I not only subtract the 7 from the middle and the right, I also subtract it on the left. That gives me 14 subtract 7 is 7. Now I've got 7x, gone. And then 21 subtract 7 is 14. And I divide it all by 7. And what do I get? 1 is less than x, which is less than 2. Aha! Well, wow, that, that sure is a lot less writing than what I did over on the right, which is part of why I love it. Um, so let me show you that same thing um, for number three on the next page. So that is part of your homework. I'm going to show you number three, and then I'm going to get you started on number four because number four does... Uh, number four does need to be split. You cannot leave it pushed together. But one, two, and three on the next page, we can leave in condensed form, and it will make your work a little shorter. So I'm going to look at these two down here, though. So since it's just that, I can make that a bit larger for us. Wonderful. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, I am rewriting this, but I am not going to split this one up. And this is how I prefer to do them if I can. Again, if there's more than one x, I cannot do that. So I am trying to get the x by itself. So if it helps, just cover up the left side, the far left or the far right, and think about what would I need to do. Oh, I would need to get rid of this plus 10. So I would subtract 10, and I need to do it in each section here and over here. So 18 subtract 10 is 8. Still have my less than side. Negative 4x, 10s are gone. Less than equal, 30 take away 10 is 20. Then we divide it all by negative 4. And yes, just in case you wondered, 
it still applies that if I divide by a negative, I still flip the signs. So this is negative 2, and then this turns into greater. This is x. This turns into greater or equal, and this is negative 5. So my graph will look like an open circle at negative 2, a closed circle at negative 5, and then my shading, because my x is between, my shading is between. My shading should not be inside that circle. Okay. All right. So number one only takes you one step to isolate x. You can do it the same way I just did number three. Number two is more similar to number three because it is two steps. And then we have number four. And I'm not going to do all of number four, but I am going to get number four started for you. Because I have x's all over the place, I can't, I can't just leave it squished together because I would always have more than one x. So then I have to think this part and then this part. Notice that the part in the middle gets used twice. So the problems we're going to do, 8 take away 3x is less than negative 8x minus 7, and negative 8x minus 7 is less than 4 minus 7x. And then I have to solve both of those. Like I basically do these like they are separate problems like when it was an or. I'd need a line on both sides. In both cases, I'm going to have to get my vari I'm going to have to move a variable, right? Move a variable. So then I have 8 plus 5x is less than negative 7. Take away 8. Should be in some super familiar territory now once we've got that split up and we get rid of one variable. And then divide by 5. And this part, x is less than negative 3. And then I would do something similar on the right. It is an and. So the, my two endpoints, the shading, one of them is going to be at negative 3. The other one, find out. And then the shading is going to be in the middle. So this was our lesson on compound inequalities. I hope this is helpful. Thanks.